Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, board certified behavior analyst, and best-selling author. When Lucas was a baby, he was addicted to his pacifier. And since becoming a behavior analyst in 2003, I've seen tons of kids who are equally addicted to pacifiers and also kids who have major problems weaning from a bottle. When I see parents out in stores and they have toddlers with pacifiers in their mouths or there's older children drinking out of a baby bottle, I want to just yell, get that pacifier or bottle out of their mouths. It's affecting their teeth, their language, and probably their behavior too. But I get it. I was that parent and I didn't know how to wean Lucas from his pacifier without it being traumatic for both of us. Many children, especially those with behavior issues, frequently use pacifiers well past infancy. Their parents struggle with what to do to keep them quiet and, and keep them happy, so they usually just give in and plug the child up with a pacifier. Toddlers and even older children can also be addicted in the same way to a bottle. Both bottles and pacifiers are really bad for toddlers and older children because they ha hamper talking. They usually increase problem behaviors related to access to tangibles and both bottles and pacifiers can be detrimental to normal teeth development, both baby teeth and adult teeth. So I've created the following steps to help a former client of mine uh, get weaned from her pacifier, which she was addicted to. These steps should help with weaning um, your child from a pacifier or bottle if you're not willing or able to go cold turkey, which is another route you could choose. So if you wanna do more of a slow process of weaning, here's what I would do. There's six steps. I'm just gonna go over them briefly and you can download the cheat sheet right below this video at marybarbera.com and that will give you these six steps to take with you if you really do want to try this out. So step one with weaning from a bottle or pacifier is to assess when your child needs or uses a pacifier or bottle. So the time of day, what the setting is, is it at nighttime, during car rides, only at church and, and places where you need to keep the child quiet. So the first step is always assessment. The second step is to make a plan with boundaries to wean based on your assessment. So make a plan that I'm only going to feed a bottle one time a day or she'll only have a pacifier at nap, nap or nighttime or in the car or at church. I will only give one bottle at night when I'm home sitting in a certain rocking chair. So make a plan for yourself to um, tackle this, to gradually wean things out. Number three, if your child likes or has more than one bottle or pacifier, hide or dispose of the others so they can't stash them away or accidentally find a pacifier during non-pacifier times. I see this happen a lot in kids' houses where they're, they're actually looking under sofas or, or reaching for cabinets in the kitchen and when I ask what they're reaching for or what they're looking for, it's a pacifier. So if you wanna keep one pacifier in the bedroom and one in the glove compartment of the car, that's fine. You just need one or two and you need to maintain control of the bottles or pacifiers during the weaning process. Step four is if you're going to wean to just using the pacifier at nap or nighttime, a good te technique that I created was to create a binky or pacifier box, a, just a regular shoe box and that can be kept up into uh, the closet on a high shelf in the closet in the bedroom. And the child then would learn that nap is all done or nighttime is all done. The pacifier goes into the pacifier box and the pacifier goes, uh, the box goes up high on a shelf. And that gives clear boundaries to the child so they don't, um, they don't expect the pacifier outside of those times. And number five is to give 
strongly preferred edibles or toys for giving up the pacifier and putting it in that box or giving up the pacifier in general. So you want to um, have other strong reinforcement to make that happen. And the final step is for bottles particularly, we want to give the least preferred drink in the bottle and the most preferred drink in a cup. So they can continue to have the bottle, but if they love juice and they don't really like water, then you're going to want to put water in the bottle and juice in the cup and that way it'll get more likely that they'll want to take the cup. Also, we want to pair the cup with highly re reinforcing videos and activities during non-bottle times. So when it's a non-bottle time, the bottles should be out of sight and, um, and just the cups with highly preferred liquids in them. While your child or client probably won't understand this complex plan, even infants will respond to reinforcement and other behavioral procedures that are incorporated into these six steps. If your child is ever crying while trying to access pacifiers or bottles, we want to not give them it to them. Also, if they're crying or having other problem behaviors while accessing the reinforcement, including blankets, pacifiers, bottles, we want to take the item away for at least a few seconds, show the child that crying, they can't have their preferred items while they're crying, get the child to quiet down, and then give the item back. At the very minimum, children should not have access to pacifiers, blankets, or bottles on demand at any time of the day or night. They need your help with setting boundaries. Assessing, planning, and taking action may be emotionally taxing for you and your child. So it's okay to pick a less stressful time to implement all of this, such as after the holidays, when the other siblings go back to school, after vacation is over, etc. The important thing to remember is that with these six steps, you can tackle the pacifier problem and help your child. Good luck to you. Remember, uh, you can download the six steps in writing right below this video, and I'll see you next week.